love him. I love him because he first loved me. And he purchased my salvation on Calvary. Oh, I love him. I love him because he first loved me. And he purchased my salvation on Calvary. Oh, I love him. I love him because he first loved me. And he purchased my salvation on Calvary. Oh, I love him. I love him because he first loved me. And he purchased my salvation on Calvary. Amen, amen. Lord, Lord, bless you, children of God. We do greet each one of you in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our strength, and our Redeemer. It is God who has brought us through, and it is God who will continue to bring us through. He has been good and we thank him. We reverence him. We honor him. We give him praise. We give him glory and we give him honor. I told you all yesterday that we were going to have a surprise for you today. Uh, bishop James Lebby, who is the Bishop of the Christian Center Church Worldwide in Liberia, West Africa, is with us tonight. We thank God for his life, and we trust that God is going to say something needful to us, something that will, will bless us. The thing we've got to understand about the church is that there are no perfect churches, just as there are no perfect saints. So we need what others have and others need what we have. I'm trusting that this evening, Bishop James will share with us some of what we need here at the Christian Center. I was introduced to him by one of our bishops in uh Accra, Ghana. I've never been to Liberia as of yet. Um, but I told some of the saints we were watching a program about Liberia and the civil war that they had there back in the 90s, the early 90s. It was very, very terrible. There were very, very atrocities, many atrocities that were committed some of the saints right here at the Christian Center refused to watch the program. And me and one of the brothers continued to watch the program. And I said to the young brother, and we were amazed at, at what was going on. If you get an opportunity, those of you that feel led, uh, check out the Liberian Civil War. 
But I remember saying to him about 10 years ago, I said, God is going to connect me with some of those people. At that point, I didn't know any Liberians. I hadn't been around any Liberians, but I knew that what they had gone through and the suffering that they had experienced and the, the, the traumatic situations that they had gone through, that God was going to connect me with them and give me a word in season for these people and also have a word for me from these people. See, sometimes, saints, we can think that we have had it rough until we meet some folk that have had it much rougher. And what we saw on the television screen that evening amazed us, they shocked us, but I knew that God was going to connect me with the Liberians. Uh, I have since stayed on Buda Barum refugee camp where many Liberians are staying in Ghana, a refugee camp where the Ghana government has uh, brought and allowed many of them to come and get away from the war because the war was so terrible. And, uh, you know, I have had the chance to meet many of them. They are beautiful, a beautiful people. Uh, Pastor James, Bishop James is no exception. I met him yesterday for the first time. We were introduced by our bishop in Accra, Ghana, uh, Bishop Peter Adai Poku, who uh, installed him. He, he was going to Liberia. I said, look, man of God, I said, you don't have to wait on me to install individuals and bishops of the Christian Center Church worldwide. I said, this is not my movement. This is God's movement. And God has not assigned any one man or one woman in charge of the church. If you are in a church where you think, where the pastor thinks or the, the apostle or bishop thinks that they are the one in charge of the church, then you need to get out of there as quickly as you can. Because we got one leader. His name is Jesus Christ. All the rest of us are followers. So children of God, I, I am very pleased and I'm very happy. My spirit is rejoicing because God is fulfilling another prophetic word. Not only did he say to me that I will connect you with those people, talking about the Liberians, but he also said to me, I will be sending you people from what? All over the world. Here we have had the pleasure. It's not many of us here. No, we're not the biggest ministry in town. And I share with the saints, we don't have to be the biggest to be the best. You don't have to be one of the biggest to be the best. Would you rather have right now, would you rather have one ton of garbage or one ounce of gold? Come on, somebody, talk to me in here. One ounce of gold. Even though it's not as much as the trash, it is much more valuable. We want to be valuable people. We want to be in valuable ministries. Just because a ministry has a lot of people, that doesn't make it valuable. We want good people. And I believe that Bishop James is good people in the Christian Center Church worldwide. So children of God, I am happy to announce and without further ado and discussion, I bring to the podium with Jesus Joy, Bishop James Levy, Bishop of the Christian Center Church worldwide in Liberia, also the pastor of Transformation, what? Transformation Worship Center. They are in the process of building a very serious uh, facility. Those of you that want to contribute to this building, feel free to send your donations in, just earmark. This is for Bishop Levy and the, and the work that is going on in Liberia. We bring to the pulpit a good friend of mine, a brother that is on fire for Jesus, a brother that is doing great things for the Lord and will do even greater things, saith the Lord, in different parts of the world. That's a prophetic word for you, man of God. We bring Bishop James Levy. God bless you. Saints, put your hands together and welcome him as he comes up. Okay. 
Amen. 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 We want to bless God for this time. Uh, being here is a long journey, a very long one. And I want to be grateful to the Apostle Robert for his hospitality of being here. Man of God, it's an honor to be here at headquarters. Amen. I want to bless God for the time. I don't want to go too much time. Let's go through the world and see exactly what God had to say to us for today. And those of you out there watching in Viewland, it God will take you a higher height in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we give you the praise in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you because you are faithful. You are awesome. What a mighty God we serve. We bless you, O God, because without you, there is nothing. In the beginning was you, and the end will be you. Thank you for your word that is about to come forth. Speak to us, O God. Speak to our heart and lead us into the world of truth. We thank you now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In Second Chronicle chapter 20, verse 20. Second Chronicle verse 20, verse 20. Second Chronicle verse 20. He said, believe in the Lord your God, so you shall be established. Believe in his prophet, and you shall prosper. Believe in the Lord thy God, and you shall be established. Believe in the prophet, and you shall prosper. In Jesus' name. From this voice, I'll be speaking on the full dimension of faith. The full dimension of faith. The Bible says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Every man who comes to God must believe that God exists. And He's the author and the reward of, of those that seek Him diligently. So I'll be speaking on the mystery of faith, the full foundation of faith. Number one, faith in God. Number two, faith in the world. Number three, faith in God's seven and the ministry. And number four, faith in the Holy Spirit. Jesus. Amen. Now let's look at the first word, faith in God. Faith in God. Faith in God. There is nothing that exists apart from God. Every life was formed in God. The Bible says, in him we breathe. In him we live. In him we have our being. So our life is tied to God. And the only thing that God has assured us, he has given us, is his wall. Outside the wall of God, life becomes stagnation. Outside the wall of God, life becomes depressed. The Bible says, within God, all things have their being. Believe in God and you shall be established. Our establishment doesn't come from what we acquire. I've seen people who have what it takes to live in this town. But there's no peace. No peace. No joy. I came in contact with a man who have everything. Very much rich in our time. But there is one thing that he lack of. And he called us to join him in prayer. Pastor James, there's one thing that is giving me tough time. My wife cannot conceive. The day of the medication and all the treatment to make sure that she conceive, but for the, five, for, for, for the past five years, nothing. And I'll show you one thing. In Jeremiah chapter 1, God said to Jeremiah, before you were born, born i knew you 
before your mother conceived you i knew you i set you apart to be a prophet now i make it to understand that if god knew jeremiah before he was born then where was he that means jeremiah was in the mind of god hallelujah hallelujah now if jeremiah were in the mind of god then that means god knows everyone by name even the born and the unborn one he knew their existence because their life came from him so if any life will be formed on the earth must come from him i said your money cannot produce that life your job cannot produce that that's life it comes from only accepting jesus christ as a law and personal savior amen and i prophesy to somebody out there before you leave this house in the name of jesus what you're seeking for it shall be run unto you in the name of jesus amen amen believing in god trusting in god is the only source of our being trusting in god before i make my trip to the to the u.s the embassy out there denied people in the dozen they don't just get visa out to anyone if you receive a visa it's not because you've been to the states it will be by grace and i stood at the gate there and i said to myself he said wheresoever our feet shall tread shall become our inhabitant and i possess a miracle as my own and i believe in the word of god when i got to the embassy i took off my shoes and i left my two bare feet on the ground and i speak the word lord i trust you your word cannot lie let it be known today those who come with me that your war is forever and i enter the embassy and she asked me how long you be there for so i'll be there for a couple of months okay congratulations welcome to the u.s and i came also the word of god is our source of strength when we trust in god when we believe in god the bible said with god all things are possible so when we trust god when we rely on god there is nothing can be impossible to us and i believe as you begin to trust god in whatever fear you are by the power of the holy ghost god will find you out in the name of jesus believe in god believing in god trusting in god believing in god trusting in god believing in god trusting in god is the only means of our time no man make it in this journey of life without god no man survive their race no man survive in their academic no man survive in their career no man survive in their fantasies without god that's why i envy men who say there is no god i envy their speech with passion there is no god there is a god when you look at the tree around you can see there is a god when you look at a child being born today and see them you say there is a god when you look at the sky you say there is a god there is a god in this land and i believe when we trust in yeshua and believe on his word nothing shall be impossible in the name of jesus i prophesy to you today as you trust god he will find you out as you trust god he will deliver you as you trust god there's no witchcraft no demons no agent can withstand you i have seen the power of god be explore in four dimension behind those who trust him and yet he said matthew 28 i will never leave you nor forsake you i will be with you to the end when we put our trust in god like david we can say to goliath you shall fall like a mere man trusting in god is our only source trusting in god trusting in god the next thing they have to do with the war you can't trust god when you don't believe his war god is his war 
He said, I exalt my wall above my name. God can change anything, but he can't change the same. Because his wall is his bound. His wall, there is nothing above the earth, under the earth that God could swear to. He swear by himself. And he become the living wall. And when that wall becomes part of our life, when we meditate on the wall, when we dwell on the wall, on every scripture of the wall, and allow the wall to become a reality in our spirit, the manifestation of the Holy God becomes our evidence. The wall of God. The wall of God. The wall. And they will say, the wall is a lamp to my feet and the light to my path. Everywhere is full of darkness. It takes the wall to lighten your path. Because without the wall of God, you walk in deep darkness. And the Bible says, many are those who are crushed in the path of darkness outside the light. So the wall of God becomes the light to our feet. If you will trust God, then you must believe his wall. Blam Batimaya cry unto him. That son of David, have mercy on me. That son of David, heal me. And Jesus sent for him when he was brought before Jesus. And Jesus asked him, Do you believe that I can do such thing? He said, Yes. He said, Then by your faith, be me whole. Until you believe every word that God spoke, you are not in his presence. The presence of God is not coming to church. Coming in the house of God in the four walls does not connect you to God's presence. What brings you in the presence of God? The Bible said, and Jesus said unto the woman at the way, the time is coming and the time is now. Where the true worshiper will worship the Father in truth and in spirit. Not on the mountain and not in Jerusalem. So it takes the word of God when the word of God is digested in our spirit and it is meditated upon, then our life becomes a sign and wonders. There are so many Christians move around today saying they know God. Jim will say, If you know God, show me your faith. Because the word of God is of faith by itself. Once you carry the wall, once you live the wall, you are living the raw faith. So the wall of God here, in order for us to experience a dramatic or testimony in a turning point of our life, one, we must believe God, we must trust him. Two, we must believe in his wall because his wall is the one that settles matters. Ah, uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The wall of God. The wall of God, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 say, Unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think, he can do it. 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 And Jesus is still in the business of doing it. It doesn't matter how far you have gone in your error. When you trust in God and believe in every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I hear God saying, for the word that come out of my mouth, it shall now return to me for. It shall accomplish that which it is sent for. So when you carry the wall, you carry God himself. When you carry the word of God in your spirit, you are carrying the horse of heaven. Because heaven is sustaining on the wall. Heaven is sustaining on the wall. That's why he said, I exalt my word above my own name. If God exalt his wall above his name, you must understand that we need that wall. And that wall is not the it's, it's not the letter I'm referring to. It's not the letter a W O R D. I'm not referring to the letter, I'm referring to it. Jesus. In the beginning was the war, and the war was God, and the war was God. Jesus become the wall in flesh. When Jesus become the center of our lives, it's when we realize the importance of life. When Jesus is disconnected from our life, it's when we see paradise 
to become a hell. And I prophesy to somebody out there, as you begin to grow in the world, you begin to experience the miracle of God in the name of Jesus. The wall that he spoke gave a life. So for faith to become a reality, the wall must be in place. I remember some time ago, the ball, a, a little girl at a church I was teaching on the 14 days revival. It was on the morning section. They came from the different region, from different ministry, and the phone rang, and my wife answered the phone. She said, but pastor is on the stage. He said, our daughter was struck with blindness, but they want to take her to son, a medicine man, son voodoo priest, to work on her. But I said to them, I want to take them to Pastor James, who is out there on the crusade. So they brought her to the church and I was teaching. And in the midst of it, and the Lord spoke to me, speak the word upon her and continue your message. So I said to her, do you believe in God? And the little child said, yes, I believe in God. Have you accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior? She said, no. I led her to Christ. You can't receive Jesus and still be in crisis. He who does some set free is free indeed. At that juncture, and I spoke the word, receive your sight in the name of Jesus. And I turned my back, I began to minister. Within five minutes, her eyes were open. She got up, and the whole community turned upside down. I speak to somebody out there in the name of Jesus. Whatever you're going through, there will be a turning point in the name of Jesus. The war. The war. The war. The war. The war. The war. I have lived on this war for the past 17 years. And the wall of God never failed me. The war. My wife have tumor in the womb. And doctor said she had to go through operation. But when I went through the scripture and that Jesus saying, by my spouse you are healed. I wish above all things that you be in good health. I went back to her one morning and I spoke to her in the name of Jesus. Every tumor in the womb, I command it to turn into pregnancy in the name of Jesus. I dissolve every knot and clock. I release your sister, loose your tube, and release your Philippine tube and clean up your womb in the name of Jesus. That said to it. Within a month, she went back to the hospital doctor so we can see the wall, the wall of God, the wall of God. When the wall come, every unshakable things must be shaken. Every unmovable things must be moved. Why? Because the wall of God is God Himself. You can't stand before the wall. Mm -mm. I have not seen no witchcraft, no wizard, no demons stand before the written wall. And I believe today, as we go through this, God gonna give us grace to meditate on the wall to allow the wall of God to become a reality to our spirit because we are living in the dangerous time. We live in the time where evil is on the high increase. We live in the time where evil become, become wretching as a wretched wind. Everywhere we tell a lot of evil, men speaking evil, the demons is manifesting and in, in flourish spirit is manifesting. Evil spirit is on the other hand. The Bible said there are terrors that move by day and armor that move by day and pestilence that move by night. Evil is everywhere. So to survive in this critical war, you need the war. You need to know the word of God. Doctor is killing a lot of people. Let me say something. So many people in the hospital, some of them who died, they didn't die because they were sick. They died because of the report. Who report can we believe? Let all men be liars. Let all men be liars. Let all report be false. 
and let the report of the war become truth because in this war is where we have our being in this war is what we have our life in this war is when our life is killed day by day so let all men be liar so more people are dying today not because of the sickness i have seen people who become sick the woman with the issue of blood for 38 years but faith in god back by action for healing physician could not heal it no medicine could kill it but she believes if only i can touch the hems of his garment i know that i shall be made whole jesus does not speak to her but just believing the environment of god by touching here it comes so more people are dying apostle not because doctors say they said they're going to kill them i've seen people who who, who every part of their body damaged but in the midst of it god healed them Jesus. i encounter a pastor who the doctor said his kidney his labor damaged his gut grew long ago a pastor and his god is in for him suffering to even sit he can't sit because the the extension of his god had grew larger they said the, the labor damage and everything on him were failing he had few most days and months to die and we were on our crusade when he came there he said man of god join me in prayer and I look into his face, and the devil said to me, Just leave him. He's on his way to his grave. Then the Lord spoke into my spirit Ezekiel, can this bull live? Then I stood in front of him and said, You will live. You will not die, for it is written, You shall live and not die to declare the glory of the Lord. You will live. I took the water I was drinking and I blessed the water. Drink after he drank the water. What came out of him could not be explained. The war. There is power in the war. There is healing in the war. When we speak the war in every situation, things bound to change. When we speak the war in things of our life, in sickness, in financial crisis in everything that we go through it is the word of god that said to it can you imagine what came out of him and today he's preaching strong yeah. in the ministry set up by him for 10 years with 10 years pregnancy the war ezekiel can this live do you believe that these dry bones can come to life? You must believe it. I don't care how the situation becomes tedious. There is a way out. And that way is through the word of God. This book has brought me places. This book has shown me people I never dreamed in my life I could see because of the war. And one word God said, I will take you places. Kings and queens shall become your nursing and mother. I stood on this wall. I lost my father, lost my mother, and everybody during the war died. I had to make it by myself. It was the word of God that took me through. So, I envy people who don't read this book, but believe what the book says. For it's our life manual. And I prophesy to somebody out there, no matter your situation no matter your condition no matter the crisis when you trust in the word of god and apply the word to your situation there will be miracles in the name of jesus 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 there is healing in the wall there is healing in the wall there is healing in the wall matthew 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 chapter 8, verse 2 to 3. Matthew chapter 8, verse 2 to 3. A lepros came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, 
make me clean. Mm. And Jesus touched him and said, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy was clean. Woo, hallelujah. Mm. If thou be willing, you can clean me. Ladies and gentlemen, may I dance to you? The war is ever ready. The wall of God is ever ready. There was no shortage in his strength. There is no shortage in his strength. The war is ever ready. Yeah. The man asking Jesus, if you are willing, you can cleanse me. Jesus said, No, you don't you don't know say. I've been willing before you, you got sick. Come, boy. And he touched him. And the leprosy left him. And that's gonna happen for somebody in this house. That's gonna happen for somebody in this house. That's gonna happen for somebody in this house in the name of Jesus. In Luke chapter 1, verse 45. Luke chapter 1, verse 45. And blessed is she that believe. But there shall be a performance of those things which were told from the law blessed is she that believed thank you jesus for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the law blessed blessed are those who believe in the world and what was said shall be performed all you have to do believe the world as it is you can't trust God when God say, jump. If indeed you trust him, if he said, jump, jump. Mm. Mm. La kaba santa lebus. Le kabo soto. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you believe him, whatsoever he tells you, do it. The performance of miracles does not tie in to the scripture is start in the doing if you dare can do what he says that the performance of the miracle that was told you shall be performed shall be performed blessed now you see jesus saying if only you can believe it's a blessing by itself just to believe is a blessing he said unto thomas you see me that's what you believe but blessed are those who have not seen me but yet believe i don't have to see it all i can do is to believe it though i can feel it but i believe it though i cannot see it i believe it those i cannot sense they happen around me but stay i believe he's not a son of man to lie what he say he's gonna do he's surely gonna do must believe in God. When you start believing in God, you must start believing in His war because His war is the one that's going to perfect your life. The wall of God. The word blessed. Blessed is she that believe. For there shall be a performance of those things that was told. Blessed is she. If you can only believe heaven shall confirm their war concerning your life if you can only believe the miracles the miracles will come if you can only believe the healing the healing will come i said to the apostle i was praying yesterday night on very issues when i begin to pray for the lord said don't stop praying for healing and start thanking me for the healing. I said, wow. The healing is there. You have to believe the healing. You have to believe the healing. You have to believe the healing. You have to work it out. You have to express it. Though it may not look like it's happening, but in the realm of the spirit, there is a performance going on. If she, blessed are she who believe and 
those things which were told shall come to pass. The war. The war. If we can believe the word of God as it is, and just what it says is what will come true. There's a sister, she loved to join us in the crusade. She came to me one day before I came to the US. That was last week, Monday. And she said to me, I don't understand how things are working with me. And I said, How? She said, Everything that I think about comes true. But it never comes true in the positive way, always in the negative. I said, the problem is not the happening. The problem is you. For the Bible says, whatsoever a man think of, so is he. If you can learn to shape your faith and your belief and your thought in line with the word of God, then you have what the word says. And she said to me, I don't know how to do it. So let me show you. We were sitting. I said, I'm going to the U.S. Many times I go, I carry coat. I carry coat. I'm not going to carry no coat with t-shirts and African shirts. It's all I'm going to carry. So I said, hold my hand, let's pray. And we had their hands together and we prayed. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, not unto me, I know you. I know the workings of your power through your word through your spoken word but let it be known to her there is power in the world i prophesy everyone in the church that will bless me may they bless me with african shirts in the name of jesus i command it to come apostle you won't believe before we end the prayer full person came pastor that brother gave for you and when we opened again, African share. The next person came, pastor, dropped their gift and left. When she opened it, African share. The next person came, pastor, I sent somebody to you, bringing uh, uh, something to you. At least you, when you get it, you can remember me on your trips while you're in prayer. And when she opened it, was African share. She looked at me, there is power in the world. Psalm chapter 82 verse 6, he said, we are small gods. Our father is a God. And we, the son, we are small God. It was not God who need the animals. It was Adam. It was not God who need the wife of Adam. If it was Adam. Now, if Adam could name from the beginning, that means in the beginning, it was so. So, thank God we have arised in Christ. He said, all power have been given unto me in heaven, on the earth, and on the earth. Whatever you bound shall be bound. And what you lose shall be loose. And I told her, when you believe in that scripture and apply it in your daily life, you experience the miracles on your journey. There is power in the spoken word. Everything that I brought was African. No coat. African. Nothing. African. The ticket is to be bought, apostle, another spoken word. Father, please touch a man to bring my ticket in the name of Jesus. And let the ticket come. Within three weeks, a man called me. It's a leveling guy. He said, Pastor James, I'm going to book a ticket for you. And he booked the ticket and sent me the ticket by email. I said, how much do I pay? He said, you can go and come anytime you get, you can pay. There is power in the world. When this world become a reality to you, it no more become an ink. He said, for the word that I speak unto you, they are life and they are spirits. I 
believe in this book. That why everywhere I go, I don't let men mm -mm, mm -mm. any songs of iniquity, daughter of iniquity, try to cause my day to become a struggle. You feel the wrath of the war. There is power in the war. Listen, gentlemen. Believe in God. Believe in his war. In his war, become the source of our life. There's nothing Jesus did without speaking the war. Even rebuking Satan, he said, for it is written. Satan, it is written. Therefore, it is written. Everything, it is, it is, it is. So when we're confronting situation, we must tell the situation, it is written. It was not so from the beginning. It can't be now. In the name of Jesus. I want to end on this story. Jesus and his disciples were coming and they were gathering. The Bible said they reached to a certain location and they fed, Jesus felt that he, I believe he was hungry trying to eat something. He saw the fig tree from the distance that was very much fresh and beautiful, groomed well. Going with the minds that fruit was on it. The Bible said when he got closer, there was no fruit. And he said to A, cause be you, no man shall eat of you again. And they left the one to the city. After their missionary journey, upon their return, Peter noticed the tree that was spoken to. The tree dies from the root. Jesus, look up. The tree you spoke the weeks ago. I've been drew up. He said, Is that surprising you, Peter? Is that a surprise? Let me teach you something in this journey in which you are going through. Whatever you believe and you speak, don't doubt. Believe that which you say. You can say even to a mountain, be that removed. You can say to the sickness, depending on the gravity of the doctor report, you can speak to it. Be healed, and it shall obey you. When I read that scripture 10 years ago, it had become my meditation in my confession. I don't care what stands my way. I don't care what become the mountain. There is a word inside my belly. He said inside my belly, there's a living water. All I have to do is to speak the word. Regardless who stands as a muscle, you will fall. There is power in the world. There is healing in the world. The Bible said to them that believe, these things that were told shall come to pass. If you dare believe, your miracle is sure in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your power. We thank you, Lord, for your manifestation. We thank you for your grace, oh God, Father. Have blessed Elias, oh God, to do it in your war. We thank you, Father. I speak, oh God, to the Lord. Every signal on the side of my voice. I speak healing in the name of Jesus. Every condition, oh God, Father, that is not suitable. I speak deliverance in the name of Jesus. I speak to the financial, oh God, Father. Let there be a stability in the name of Jesus. Thank you, oh God. I can't shut the accident. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I don't know who's going to crash in accident, but I speak to you now in the name of Jesus. That accident will not catch you. That accident will not haunt you in the name of Jesus. I can't shut the accident. Hey, Kaba Sante. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, he had just canceled a terrible accident. Thank you, Father. I gave you the praise, God. I gave you the praise, oh God. I thank you for your deliverance. I thank you for your deliverance. I thank you, oh God. Every situation that is on life in your life is a come back to life. I speak to every dead part of your life to come back to life in the name of Jesus. 
what was not working it shall begin to work for today in the name of jesus while refuse to change the change has come now in the name of jesus thank you father thank you holy spirit who told you it can change who told you who told you i get god saying adam who told you that you were naked who told you that it can change who told you that you can be well who told you that it will not happen who told you that you are not conceived who told you that the condition will not change in the name of jesus i prophesy out to your life whatever you believe in god for before we begin the new month there shall be a miracle in the name of jesus there shall be a miracle in the name of jesus there shall be deliverance in the name of jesus there shall be healing in the name of jesus thank you holy spirit for it is settled in jesus name i pray amen amen god bless you god bless you god bless you Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. to thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord Bless the name of Jesus. For he is worthy from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. We were created to worship him. We were created to adore him, to love him, to praise him, to lift him. We're doing a lot of stuff, America. 
We're doing a lot of stuff. But God says, what have you been created to you? That is what you shall be judged upon. My prayer for you under the sound of my voice is that you will be busy doing what you were created to do by our creator. Bishop Levy, we thank God for your life. I am beginning to understand how the Holy Spirit works even better. I did not appoint you Bishop of Liberia. I did not do it. My son did it. But I say this to you, I could not be more happy in my spirit. I could not be more pleased with it. And I'm going to tell him that. I just sent him a message. I said, Bishop Levy is preaching right now. He said, what, Daddy? Bishop Levy is preaching right now. I sent him about 10 pictures all over the internet. I am, I, the Christian Center Church in, worldwide is in fine hands in Liberia. Amen. God Amen. bless you. Tell the saints there that I love them. Tell them I will see them personally soon. There are countries that I, I, I haven't even been to. I will come to Liberia personally and will see the people of God. Man of God, you have blessed us this evening. Thank God for your life. Thank God for your life. Children of God, we bless God this evening. For he is God and besides him, there is none other. Listen to me and listen well, children of God. There is nothing our God cannot do except sin. All right. And that's because he chooses not to. There is nothing that's even difficult for God. Whatever the problem is in your marriage, in your finances, in your church, in your nation, it's not hard to God. There's nothing difficult. It's not like God and Satan. I used to think this when I was a young Christian. God and Satan were in a fight and was rolling around. God said, uh, -uh Robert, no, no, no. I'm sitting on a throne with angels and living creatures giving me praise constantly. Satan comes before me only when I allow him to. He only does in humanity what I let him do. He does exactly what I let him do. God is in complete control of everything. God says, Robert, I have not just got to be in complete control. I have always been in complete control. I was in complete control in the garden when Adam sinned. I've been in complete control throughout all of human history. So I want to encourage you, child of God, take the shackles off and stop trying to limit God. If God has got a worldwide ministry in you, let him birth it. Let him be, let him be, let him do what he wants to do to you, through you, and for you. Some of us are frustrated in Christianity. And it's not because God is doing us wrong, but because we're trying to put shackles on God. I encourage you, let God be God, because he's bigger than any problem you have. He's bigger than any hurt you've experienced. He's bigger than any disappointment. He's bigger than the Liberian crisis that you all had about 20 years ago. I know I was terrible. I was alive. You were a young boy, but you were there. I was watching on, on, on TV, and I was a grown man then, but God is bigger. And whatever the problem is, what in your nation, in your church, in your family, in your marriage, in your holy, in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, God can fix it through His Word. God bless you, my brother. Once again, we are happy here at the Christian Center. Um, everything is in order. I am satisfied in my spirit. The Lord willing, saints, we will see you all again. Uh, for those of you that may have any special contributions or donations for Bishop Levy, send them to the Christian Center Church. We will make sure that he gets them. Send them through the website. Uh, may God continue to bless you, man of God. Close us out. We are on. Saints, you can reach us through email at the Christian Center Church at gmail.com. Check out our website at https colon forward slash forward slash thadfg dot wixsite 
facebook.com forward slash TCCCWW. Feel free to join us on Talk Shoes, Spreecast, YouTube, and iTunes at 9 a.m. 6 p.m. daily. On Talk Shoe, call 724-444-7444. Enter ID 17959. On Spreecast, type in Robert Bryan on YouTube and the Christian Center Church channel. You can see excerpts of Apostle Robert Bryan on YouTube. Donations should be sent by using the donation button on the church website or our talk shoe homepage. God bless you and heaven smile on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Roll up, roll up. If I could just.